I'm going to recall a memory of being a teenager. I had, as a, as a child, I had constipation and migraines. Some of my earliest memories are migraines. Um, and some of my earliest reoccurring nightmares were around being constipated, which is bizarre in itself. But one thing leads to another. And in Ayurveda, we can understand um, how one thing leads to another step by step. So in the last video, we talked a little bit about how there's, there's a system of liquidity in the body that we call rasa datu that encapsulates the, the plasma of the blood and the interstitial fluid that's between all of the different cells um, in, in the tissues of the body, the deeper tissues of the body, and the lymphatic fluid, which is on the other side of, of the interstitial fluid and the other side of the tissue of the body that's taking deoxygenated blood or CO2 blood that's in the lymph and it's moving the lymph back to uh, the venous return, uh, back, to the, back to the lungs for more oxygen. So if we see that, that say for instance, there's constipation. So I'm, I'm gonna draw this in. I noticed for me, it's helpful just to understand things of like, how's one thing connected to the other? Where most of us are visual learners. Say there's constipation, which we could just say, look something like this, that, that there's, um, there's not complete elimination of the colon. Why would that increase the chance of having migraines? Um, it, it's basically because energy can't flow down and out. Because it can't flow out, it gets, back, it gets bounced and it goes up. It goes into the head and it creates pressure in the head. And, and that's why I had migraines as a kid that went away as soon as I learned how to have complete elimination daily upon rising. Now, all of this, because there's, because there's waste in the colon, uh, the tissue of the body, the, if you think of how the digestive tract works, right, and the colon is part of that digestive tract, uh, is here's your mouth, and from the mouth it goes to the stomach. And then from stomach, it goes to the, all the intestines and then up and out through the colon. So as, uh, as the colon gets plugged up, well, so does everything else. All the tissue in here in the intestines isn't draining as easily. I'll, uh, and I'll draw that, right? So all this starts to get a little bit toxic, a little bit gunky. So all this gets a bit toxic, meaning it's carrying stuff that's meant to be removed from the body and now that's circulating in the body. Well, the body absorbs nutrients from the stomach and the small intestine and the large intestine into the blood. So from there it goes into the blood and then the blood is obviously circulating. Uh, the blood, remember, has plasma. It's plasma first, then secondary red blood cells, white blood cells, tertiarily, right? So the most basic tissue of the blood is this rasa, is this plasma. So now whatever qualities, whatever toxins are in the digestive tract, they're now moving across into the blood and now they're circulating. So then the body's starting to use the lymph system to detox, right? To pick up the, to pick up the toxins that are circulating in the system so that they're able to be removed from the body. If you compact this pattern, if you see this as a pattern, this is a constipation pattern over time, um, what happens is you end up with chronic symptoms. Uh, so for me, the beginning part of my chronic symptoms, first was constipation, second was migraines, and then third was allergies. And I'm just using this as a personal case study because I had allergies for ooh, 10 to 15 years. I remember them starting when I was maybe about, about going through puberty. So now there's an additional, uh, if you will, an, an additional level of stuff circulating in the blood, basically hormones. Um, and that seemed to push me over the edge. And then I started having allergies. The type of allergies I had were the kind where there was a plenitude of mucus coming out through my nostrils and through my mouth. This was mucus. I also had itchy skin. I had itchy eyes. And, uh, and I just more or less would have these acute attacks. And then I also would have chronic, chronic mucus issues. It was really not, not a fun way to go through my teenage years and through my early 20s until I started learning Ayurveda and started understanding how to 
eliminate my bowels regularly, how to detoxify um, the, the plasma of my body. Okay, so sorry, not just the plasma, the detox, the rasa, which is the plasma, the interstitial fluid, and the lymphatic fluid. So I just wanted to start by making, <laughs> making this relevant. I don't talk about Ayurveda and allergies and allergy relief from a place of just understanding it intellectually. I really understand from my body perspective, and that's what I want you to understand is what is happening with your body. We'll get a little bit into body types. We're gonna get into habits. We're gonna also get into um, cures. Like th this, this will help that type of allergies. But foundationally, I want you to understand why you have allergies. Because if you can understand why you have allergies, you can really, from an Ayurvedic perspective, start to understand why you have any types of symptoms and start to connect the dots. So this created that, created that, created that. And then you can unwind the disease pattern or the imbalance pattern in your body. So where do we go from here? We talked a bit about these forces, these forces of, of wind that creates dryness, the force of fire, which creates heat, and the force of water that creates cohesion. I should also say the force of wind creates movement and it's the quality it then secondarily creates is, is dryness. So now what we want to look at a bit is, is how this works with body types. So people that have more movement in their body, whose bodies naturally disperse energy are vata types. People that have uh, more higher metabolic types are pitta types where their body burns more. They're, uh, uh, hotter metabolism and people that have more fluidity in their body are more kapha they have more water in their body their bodies tend to store energy as opposed to burn energy or move energy so you may from ayurveda have heard of vata and pitta and kapha um, again these are forces and they're also body types so kapha types will tend to have kapha allergies pitta types will tend to have pitta allergies Vata types will tend to have Vata allergies, but you can also have uh, a Vata type that has Pitta Vata allergies or a Kapha type that has Vata Kapha allergies and whatnot. And so we want to understand if we go back to that original understanding of like there's qualities um, and if we can understand the qualities of our allergies, if we can, if we can diagnose um, exactly what's going on in what parts of the body, what's happening in the skin, what's happening in the digestive tract, and what's happening in the lungs, those three systems in particular, will have a much better chance. So you're gonna go back to your drawing and see exactly what symptoms you have and exactly what qualities they have. Um, is there more redness? Is there more dryness? Is there more congestion or thickness? And that's often enough to just get started. Okay, so back to these types. One of the ways, and I have a whole workshop that's just particularly on getting to know your constitution. Uh, it's called the Constitution Workshop. And so I'm not going to go into all of that right now. I'm just going to give you a brief overview so that you understand a little bit about it. Um, those who are more ectomorphic, who have a hard time putting on weight, who have a lighter frame, who are more delicate in nature, more sensitive um, in terms of your senses. Those of you who have very sensitive nervous systems, that's more of this ectomorphic or vata type. For those of you who are more of a medium frame, have lithe, strong musculature, uh, who don't really tend to gain or lose weight, who have a strong appetite, strong digestion, strong elimination, and a, and a sharp mind, those are more of the mesomorphic or pitta body types. And the endomorphs are those who have a stronger, more uh, stable constitution, who have endurance, naturally occurring endurance, who will naturally be told to hold on to weight as opposed to release weight. That's more of the endomorphic or kapha body type. So I just wanted to bring that in because as we start talking more about vata, pitta, and kapha, we want to understand that they're both constitutions and their forces. All three forces are in each and every cell. In every cell we have movement, the force of movement, we have the force of metabolism, and we have this force of liquidity, which is the water element. So they're all in every cell, but then we have constitutional tendencies. And the more we understand all of this stuff, the more we can get to the root of our imbalances in 
in terms of our allergies. So on this tip sheet, I wanna show you a few things and that's that which is down here, that which is aggravated by dryness, aggravated by heat and aggravated by moisture. And I ask you on this to circle your symptoms and then I start to guide you to what to store towards, steer towards and what are my top tips. The reason I want you to go into this is it just kind of helps you see like where are my groupings of symptoms? So when you circle which symptoms you have, if we just go back to the example that, that I had before, um, I had constipation. So that would have been under a Vata type symptom. I, I did have hypersensitivity. My nervous system was very, very sensitive to the environment. I was allergic to dogs and cats and dust and all sorts of things. I was very sensitive to, to my environment. Um, I had itchy eyes. I had headaches. Um, I had irritable emotions. Definitely on the irritable emotion side. I also had copious thick mucus. I did not have, I, it was coming more from my sinuses, but they wouldn't get impacted. Um, I had white coating on my tongue. I didn't have these other symptoms of, I didn't have a sinus type headache and I didn't have a low appetite. I actually had a strong appetite, which would go more under pitta is a strong appetite. Um, under vata would be a variable appetite, meaning sometimes you remember to eat, sometimes you don't. All right. So these are just general groupings of symptoms. So if I were to look at this, I'd be like, but I have, I have symptoms in all three categories. And if this is you, if you're looking at this and you're like, wow, I've got, I've got, I'm aggravated by dryness, aggravated by heat and aggravated by moisture. There's simply a level of complexity. And what this means is that it might be quite, it quite, might be quite a bit harder for you to uproot the root causes of the imbalance. It doesn't mean it's impossible. I've been allergy free uh, for years. Actually, I've got to show you something. Come here, little one. Come here. See, I can rub my face all over my puppy. I can rub my face all over my cat. And I'm fine. I, I can be in dusty environments and I'm fine. Yeah. Thank you. No, just kidding. <laughs> So if, if you're looking at this and you're like, oh my goodness, there's this level of complexity to my allergies, or maybe you're doing this for a child or a client and you're seeing that there's a level of complexity, don't despair uh, at all. It just simply means that there's levels of imbalances that need to be uprooted and that that might take some time. Um, and now what I wanna talk about is, is another concept, which is called AMA. Now, ama means that which is uncooked in the body. So I'm gonna, ama is also that which is not digested. So it's that which has not been metabolized. So there's the two holes of the body, there's the great channel of the stomach, of the small intestines, and of the colon, right? Something like that, sort of a terrible drawing. So if we're not completely digesting, absorbing, and eliminating, then what happens is there's a buildup of ama of that which is undigested and this was the case this was the case for me i had allergies as a kid and as a teen and as a young adult through ayurveda i uprooted my allergies otherwise i would have also had allergies through my adult life my allergies were the horrible super snotty itchy eyes puffy face variety the doctors tested me and found me allergic to dust, to pollen, to cats, to dogs. Until I learned Ayurveda for allergy relief, I had no idea that there were underlying imbalances that were provoking my allergy attacks. The side effects from the medicine left me, well, medicated. Ayurveda understands the language of allergies, the root causes, and what allergies are trying to tell a person. For those allergic to your ecosystem or your pets, pause and think. Why are you allergic to nature? Are you so out of the loop that your body recognizes local pollen as allergens? If you have pet allergies, do they get worse with certain seasons? While it might appear you are allergic to nature, chances are you're out of sync inside your body. My experience as an Ayurvedic practitioner and leader at yogahealer.com since 2000 
is that out of sync bodies become reactive bodies when an internal tipping point is reached. This tipping point is often reached when seasons changed and internal imbalances have built up. What type of allergies do you have? Did you know that the underlying cause of allergies is unique to the individual? Both their Ayurvedic constitution and their imbalance? This is how Ayurveda works with diseases and imbalances. What is the constitution, Prakruti, and what is the individual's imbalance, or reason they have allergies, Vikruti? Pharmaceuticals, on the other hand, work like a one-size-fits-all approach. And we all know that one-size-fits-all never really fits. Pharmaceuticals that are antihistamines never target the root problem. Allergy drugs have side effects. From a holistic perspective, the side effects aggravate the root problem. Yet, leave the allergies untreated and you suffer. What is the way out of this loop? Through symptoms, allergies reveal much of the vicruity to the trained eye. The symptoms lead you back to the cause. If you know how to interpret your symptoms, you'll find the cause. In Ayurveda, either vata, pitta, kapha, or ama are usually involved. Sometimes multiple doshas plus ama are at the root. Always come back to the question, why is my body reactive? And what if I could help my body become less reactive? Wisdom is power and allergies are optional. Included in my all new allergy relief with Ayurveda course is part one, what type of allergies do you have? Understand your symptoms and the doshas. Part two, allergies, ama, deeper imbalances, and autoimmune disease. Part three, rewilding your gut, your lungs, and your skin. And part four, allergy relief, vata, pitta, and kapha solutions. I hope you'll take a look at my new allergy relief with Ayurveda workshop, whether you have allergies or someone you take care of has allergies. If you wanna help yourself or someone else, I know you're going to love it. It's at yogahealer.com forward slash allergy dash relief. And the good news is as a podcast listener or a YouTube watcher, you get 65% off with this link. So yogahealer.com forward slash allergy dash relief, and you can get 65% off my new allergy relief workshop with Ayurveda. Cheers to an allergy-free existence. This is Kate Stillman with yogahealer.com. So this is another worksheet you'll find in your handouts. So this is Agni and Ama, and Agni means this power of digestion. It's the, it's fire. It's a little different than the word Pitta. It's more of just this raw power of fire and digestion within your cells. It's the feeling of hunger. It's the feeling of very deep absorption in your body. And Agni is the, sorry, and Ama is the opposite. Ama is the sludge that comes up the works both on the cellular level and also the systems level. So what we want to identify right now is, are your allergies more vata, pitta, or kapha? And is there Ama? And so in the last video, we went a bit into the different qualities or, or uh, what we say in Ayurveda is gunas. What are the different qualities involved in your allergies? Is there dryness? Is there stickiness? Is there a heat-based inflammation? Um, is there an acuteness? Is it more chronic and low grade? And now what we're gonna look at is, 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 there, uh, is there ama? So we're gonna go particularly into this. Is your agni out of whack? Or do you have signs of ama? So number one, my, teeth, my tongue has white gunk on it. You might remember to the last slide where I said, oh yeah, I had thick white coating on my tongue. Um, I eat sporadically and without rhythm. That can be uh, naturally give rise to ama. I eat when I'm not hungry. That's another sign that you'll probably be developing ama. Um, if you eat even like six meals a day and you're not able to deeply turn over your fat cells for energy in the body, but instead you're just constantly replenishing your blood sugar, there's a good chance you have ama. Uh, if you overeat regularly, not just like once in a blue moon, but you know you chronically are eating more than your body can digest, then you will have stuff that's not digested in your body, and that is called ama. Uh, if you experience digestive issues and feel bloated, you have ama. Um, if you fart and burp a lot, that's a sign of ama. If you crave unhealthy foods, if you're like, wow, I wish I didn't crave this, but boy, I want another pastry, or 
whatnot, then that's another sign of ama. Um, if you have mucus, that's another sign of ama. If when you wake up, you feel heavy and lethargic, those are key signs of ama. And so that's all I wanted you to note on the slide. It's like, is, is there ama? Is there uncooked stuff? Is there stuff that's not digested in your system? I'm not going to briefly talk about how allergies can be a precursor symptom to imbalances that, if not corrected, can become more complicated diseases. Because when you have allergies, it's, it's uncomfortable, but it's not life-threatening. Um, if you have autoimmune diseases, it can be much more uncomfortable um, and, and much more unpredictable, and it can also be life-threatening or turn into something that's life-threatening. So I want to introduce this from an Ayurvedic perspective. So this, this is a bucket, and this bucket is representing you. This is the bucket of you. And what we talked about it so far is vata, pitta, kapha, and and then we also talked about the development of ama. So if we're putting ama into the bucket of us, this looks like having a sporadic schedule, having different sleeping and waking and eating times each day. Um, often vatas are those ectomorphic types that love spontaneity and creativity, but unfortunately it can create a level of unpredictability because their systems are already sensitive and delicate. Um, this can create a weakness over time where energy is dispersing more than gathering and the system's getting um, dried out. Also, vatas tend towards constipation, so there's not elimination, which can back up and mean that there's not good absorption uh, and digestion as well. Uh, if there's pitta coming into the bucket of you, this is heat, um, heat-related toxicity. So anything that, you know, if, is like a, is a blood impurity, like if you look at alcohol or caffeine or even eating too frequently, then the blood's not able to be a, a clean, clear system of uh, nutrients in and waste out. So pitta types have a sensitivity in particular to excitotoxins, um, to, you know, even just toxic smells, um, stuff that's synthetic, chemical, synthetic foods. Uh, any food made in a lab, a pitta type is going to be more sensitive to because their ability to process that which is inflammatory is less than that of the other constitutions. They're more sensitive to heat based toxins. Now, kapha types, and they're also, you know, if we just pittas are, they tend to drive hard. If anyone has workaholic tendencies, that would be an increase in pitta. All right, so kapha is, again, that which is ex excessively sticky and moist and, and so stable it creates congestion in the body. So a lot of people that eat comfort foods, people that overeat and overeat comfort foods, people that are more on the lethargic side, uh, that's going to be an increase of kapha in, in the bucket over time. So when there's these imbalances, whether it's one, two, or three, um, or whether this basically we're putting, I'm just gonna add the fourth here, this quality of ama that we're not able to digest that which we're taking in. And that can happen with any constitution. And it happens a lot with a standard westernized diet, sometimes called the standard American diet, but I find it's, um, it's a diet that's really spread into the rest of, of the world uh, where we're eating processed foods, where we're eating foods that have lower nutrient density, uh, are harder to, to digest, to create a stickiness in the body that blocks nutrients in and waste out. Uh, we're eating foods that are not foods or we're chronically overeating uh, and we're not getting real high, what we would say life force or pranic foods into our body, then AMA gets created. So those are the four factors that we're on the lookout for. So it's okay to like occasionally be, you know, more spontaneous, like a vata and, and mix up your bedtime and sleep in your sleeping time and waking time and eating time and all that. It's okay to do that occasionally. But if it's a chronic, if there's a chronic pattern, then what happens is that this, this force will start to accumulate in the bucket. And that force could be vata, it could be pitta, it could be kapha. 
in my example before, who was all three? That's how clever I am. Uh, it, it was all three. It was all three of these forces increasing over time. And what happens is at some point, uh, at some point, these forces create deeper diseases in the body. And this is the difference between a qualitative accumulation, I'm sorry, a quantitative or just an amount of accumulation versus a qualitative change in the cell structures. When it gets to a change in the cell structures, then we're dealing with a more serious disease than allergies. So here, the symptoms of this accumulation can often be allergies. It can often be digestive issues where we have digestive sensitivities. It can often be skin sensitivities. Our whole system is more sensitive. And in those earlier slides, I went to why that's so because of Rasadatu, because of the plasma is carrying the imbalances. It's going into the interstitial fluid within the deeper, that's nourishing the deeper tissues of the body. And it's also in the lymph, right? And so all of that is Rasadatu. So in this, this is all Rasadatu. All of this is circulating in the bucket of you. So skin sensitivities. Any of these symptoms might occur digestive issues or sensitivities, allergies, skin sensitivities. Now, if we keep up the chronic imbalances and we're not able to move these out, and I'm going to get into how do we move these imbalances out of the body. Don't worry, that's coming. I just want to get us in a crystal clear picture of how, how do things move from being an allergy into a chronic immune problem or an autoimmune problem. So the way that Ayurveda, I'll draw this in the disease process, is that at some point, the bucket gets full. And at that point, it overflows. And this is when it's starting to leave the level of the digestive tract and the level of the blood tissue. The blood tissue, including the plasma, including the interstitial fluid and including the lymph. And at this point, it, the, these imbalances go looking for a home. They go looking for a weak level of tissue of the body. So if, for instance, there's a weakness in your thyroid, um, and that's something that you inherited as a genetic weakness, then that's where these imbalances might go looking. In Ayurveda, the weakness from the overflow, where it's gonna overflow, is into a weakness. Those of you who love um, words in foreign languages that nail it, this is called a kavigunya. It just means that there's this level of where it's out of balance in the body, where there's a natural weakness, and it starts to embed there. It starts to deposit what? Deposit the energies, if you will, of either the force of the wind, the force of heat, or the force of cohesion. And those were of those of us who are more trained in a scientific mindset, like some of this can be hard to understand because we're really dealing with energetics here. Um, but it starts to make sense the more you actually just feel it in, in your own body. So if you wake up chronically and you feel like, oh, my lymph is a little boggy or it's a little congested, or maybe there's a little bit of puffiness in my face or puffiness in my eyes, and you feel like, what is the energy behind that? Well, it feels a little sticky. Okay. Well, if that's day after day after day, year after year, decade after decade, then you're gonna have these imbalances of that same stickiness start to deposit deeper into the cells. So that can happen in a woman in terms of her breast tissue. And now she can have fibrocystic breasts from that stickiness in her body. So at this point, um, the we're looking for a location. The deposit happens in a specific deeper tissue of the body. And from there, again, if the chronic imbalances still keep going into the bucket, then that develops into uh, a, what we call a, a disease tree, right? Where there's actually systemic changes in the cells um, within that tissue system uh, that become more and more not looking like regular tissue. Now you have irregularities in that tissue. Say, for example, uh, in the body where you start to now have tissue that's attacking tissue. So you start to have um, in the immune system, you have uh, autoimmune where the body's attacking its own natural tissue of the body. Uh, that again would be at this level of now it's systemic, 
um, in, in, in the tissue of the body. If you have, say, a full, full blown uh, autoimmune imbalance, say like fibromyalgia, where you have more, in, more heat or pitta, the force of pitta impacting in the muscle tissue of the body, the muscle fibers, and not enough kapha, not enough liquidity, not enough of the softening, uh, lubricating quality, then, then you're looking at disease all the way in that, in that tissue of the body. At that point, we'd say that there's actually a fruit of disease where there's, um, it, it's at the level of, of a deep tissue system. If you have like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, again, you have that deeply impacted tissue where there's qualitative changes in how the cells of, of that organ are functioning. So I just wanted to explain how allergies are a response of your body. Really, again, going back to how are you digesting things? What is the quality of the energies in your blood, in your plasma, in your interstitial fluid, in your lymph? And how do we, how do we keep it clean? How do we keep it lubricated? How do we keep it fluid? How do we keep it anti-inflamed? So again, lubricated is kapha, moving is vata, and anti-inflamed, that would be the, a good function of pitta where we're actually digesting the nutrients in, not just um, in our blood sugar, but also the nutrients in our fat tissue, which keeps the limbs super clean. So that's what we're gonna go into next, is what to do. I wanted to give you some more, un a, hopefully a deeper understanding of why it's important to interpret your allergies, to start to put together exactly what's happening where and start to undo the pattern is where we'll go next.